Hi, I'm Craig Coltman for Flystream magazine, and today we're going to be tying my version of an orange spinner. And now this is a little bit of a deviation from the usual type of flies that we tie. Normally, we're tying very robust flies that are designed to catch multiple fish. Uh, you know, they're, they're non-fussy, they don't need a lot of attention. But I've found that when fish are feeding on spinners in particular, they can get quite fussy and you really need a sparse fly, uh, particularly when they're feeding in calm conditions. It's a bit different if you've got a chopper or a rolling wave, but often, we'll, of course, we'll find the spinner feeders around the edges in those calm leaves, and I find that you do need quite a, uh, a subtle fly in that situation. So to start off with, we're using this. These are all tied on size 12s. Most of our mayfly in our lakes are size 12, uh, and we're using a very light wire hook. You'll notice when I wobble that, there's quite a lot of flex in there, which means that you can't fish very heavy with these flies. I don't use anything heavier than 0.14 millimetre in thickness, which is about four pounds when I'm fishing these flies, because anything stronger than that, and effectively, you wind up straightening the hook. So you have to play your fish quite gently when you've got these flies on. Now the tail, I'm using a brown or ginger colour microfibbit which we'll put in four strands and we'll split. That sort of, I suppose, works like outriggers for the fly to stabilise the fly. Then we're going to put down our body, which is an orange stripped quill. In this particular case, I get these from Polish quills and they do them in all sorts of colours. So this fly you could do in orange, you could also do it in red for the red spinners. Um, and these quills make that job very simple. The other bit of kit you will need is some super glue, because I put down a better super glue to tie the quill onto, otherwise the quill breaks and you've lost your fly. Next stage is some peacock hurl to make the thorax of the fly, and then some brown gingery cock hackle for the actual hock hackle around the front. And the whole lot is tied together with black Ato signs uh, tying thread. So we'll get started. Now, when tying this fly, you need to pay particular attention to the way you put your thread on. Now, most people would know I normally don't pay a lot of attention to that, particularly with some of the bushier style flies, because it doesn't matter as much. But with this, we're very much looking for touching turns as we go down, because it will impact on the way the body of this fly looks if you wind up with a lumpy underbody. So we're going to tie in our microfibits now, and we're going to select out four of them. And we're tying in quite a long tail. It's actually longer, or as long as the shank of the hook, maybe even fractionally longer, because spinners have quite a long tail. And we're catching that on top, and then we're coming down with touching turns right down to the start of the bend of the hook, keeping that underbody nice and uniform. There we go. So we're down to the bend of the hook there. We'll trim off those tag ends there. Now again, this is the bit that I actually find the most fiddly on this fly. We've now got to split those tail fibres. We have two going to the right and two going to the left. So I actually like to get them and actually bend them. There we go. So I bend those over, get the other two and bend them back this way. And then we've got to get a wrap around the back and up the front. And then another wrap that way. And that split our tail. Then what I do is I go right underneath, around the back, pull that forward, and that kicks them up a little bit too, so they don't push down. Then we come back with touching turns down the shank of the hook. So that's the most fiddly part of this fly out of the way, and as you can see, it was quite fiddly on that occasion. Sometimes they just come together beautifully, other times they're a little bit more difficult than they need to be. Then we're gonna go in with our orange quill, Strip quill body. There 
Now these have a little fluffy bit up the top. We just cut that off. And you'll find when you're looking at your quill, there's, they're slightly curved. So what I like to do is I like to put it, I tie it in with the curved face facing down. So, but we tie it the full length of the hook because we, again, we're looking for a nice smooth uniform body. Touching turns. Right back to the, uh, where our tail protrudes out at the back of this fly. Almost there. That's it. Then I've got to run back down the body. Again, making sure that we keep that nice and smooth underneath. This is where we use our super glue. So I put a bed of super glue down here because these quills are quite delicate. Uh, if we don't do this, they'll the quill will get broken by trout's teeth. Um, and after putting all this time into tying this fly, we don't want it to to bust the first time a, a trout eats it. So we'll catch that in our hackle pliers and then we're going to wind in our quill body. And you come down just with either touching or slightly further apart, not overlapping. And that will give you that lovely fine segmented body which looks just like the body of a orange spinner. I love these bodies, they're a beautiful looking body and of course we're not adding really any bulk at all to the fly which means they float extremely well. We cross over and tie that off. So you see we've got a very delicate sparsely tied fly at this stage. Next stage is to tie in our hackle. So we've got this gingery coloured saddle hackle here. That's nice. And I'll strip off a bit so I've got a little butt I can tie in. Tie that butt in here. And then we're going to put in that's about right. So about a third of, of the shank of the hook. You need to tie a bit in here because we've still got to create flotation in this fly. As much as I want it to be nice and sparse, it's still got to float. Then we're going to use a bit of peacock curl for the thorax. So I leave my thread here, tie it in, and come back. And then we're going to go creating our thorax, touching turns, forward and don't crowd the eye to about there then come back through it again just plumping up that thorax that's right and then we can catch that with the thread and you bring the thread back through the peacock hill to protect the peacock hill and you can just break that off now finally we're going to put in our hackle it's normally about four turns we're looking for here so winding it through, evenly through the peacock curl. That's it, that's our four turns. Catch that. Tie that in, and again we can, just, oh, oh, damn. Now it appears that the stalk on this hackle is a little bit thicker than some, so we'll actually cut that off with the tips of our scissors. Now, at this stage, what I like to do is wet my fingers and then get everything and stroke them back and up. And we'll start to tie in our head. Back and up, tying in our head there. And that will start to force everything back a little bit and up. Then we'll put some wax on this and we'll do a couple of whip finishes in the head, keeping everything very sparse here. I don't want a big bulky head on this fly. Looks like I've got one going in the wrong direction there. We got him there. Okay, now you think, okay, well that's finished, but it's not. 
because what I don't want in this fly, I don't want hackles pointing down. I want everything in this fly to be sticking out in like 180 degrees around the top of the fly and out the sides. So I roll the fly over and I actually start to physically push those hackles around. And you can squeeze them around and push them back up. Now, if they will spin around so that they will form that 180 degrees and over the top, that's fine. You can leave the fly like that. If you get ones that persist in wanting to point downwards, you can then go in with the tips of your scissors and actually cut those out. Now in this case, we're fortunate in that you'll see that as I rotate that around, that they're all actually sticking about the right way. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, but I want this fly to sit flush in the surface film, so it's like a splat fly, like a spent spinner. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is too that there's no wing in this fly. Um, I actually think that by adding the wing to a spinner, which I know spinners have, you just add unnecessary bulk, which means that the fly looks less natural. Uh, and you frankly the fish don't care that it hasn't got a wing so why put it on particularly when it tends to bulk up the fly and it doesn't fish in the surface film as well so that's the um, the orange spinner again we do there you go we do have a couple that just want to persist in pointing down so just cut them off uh, flush with the bottom of the hook there and that's my version of a orange spinner again you can also tie them red uh, or black spinners the same way as well